I've had 36 peak experiences in my life. I'll give you an example of the kind of thing that happens to me. And back in 1992-93, I was asked to speak at a conference in Pasadena at a large hotel that would be about I don't know, at least 500 people in the audience. And so about a week before, I went out there with the two guys who were putting the conference on, uh, Gary Schultz and Norio Hayakawa from Japan. I uh, were putting this UFO, you know, alien conference on, and I was going to be the keynote speaker. But we went out to the hotel about a week before to kind of spy out the hotel and see what we were going to do. Norio asked me, he said, when you come up on the platform, what are you going to need? Are you going to be doing a fly presentation or a blackboard or what? And I told him, no, I don't need anything. All I want is a table and a chair because I want to be able to lay all the documents out that I'm talking about. And I just want to be like a teacher in front of a class. I don't need anything special. So he said to me, he said, all right, then I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll have somebody sitting behind you on a on a bar stool with a video camera over your shoulder so that when you're talking about a document, hold it up knowing that they're going, he's going to zoom in on it and we'll have closed circuit TV so people can see what you're reading. And so that next Saturday, it came off great. I did a two-hour presentation on UFOs and alien stuff and all kinds of occult subjects, and it went off fine. That night when we were leaving, the event, the guy who was filming me, sitting behind me on the stage, he asked me, he said, Jordan, could you come over tonight for dinner? My wife and I would like to have you come over. And he lived right there in the city in Pasadena. I said, sure. So we go over there. He's uh, got a really nice condo. The wife is in the kitchen fixing dinner, and he and I are sitting in the front room talking about all kinds of strange stuff. After a while, she comes out of the kitchen and says to him in front of me, she said, have you told him yet? And he <laughs> said, no, I wasn't going to tell him till after dinner. And I thought to myself, oh, God, not again. I don't like it. <laughs> Surprises. <laughs> so I said to him, I said, what do you mean you were going to tell me? Tell me what? And he said, we had an ulterior motive for inviting you here. He said, I've told this story to so many people over the last many years, and my wife has heard it so many times. Now I'm going to tell you the story. He said, I just turned 50 years old. And when I was 17 years old, I was back on the East Coast. And one morning, I was out of school for the summer, and I was thumbing my way north to stay with my cousin. And he said, an old man picked me up at a pickup truck. And he said, the, the truck was filthy, dirty, falling apart. And the old man looked to be at least 90 years old. And he said, but at least it's a ride. So he says, when I got in, this old man began to tell me everything about me and my family. He was absolutely correct. He knew everything about my dad's job, my mother, her friends, my, my sister. The whole time we're driving, he was telling me all about my life. How I'm, yeah, and how I'm doing in school, what my sister's boyfriend's doing, and how my dad's doing in business. And he said, everything he was telling me was exactly right. And he said, I was amazed as a kid, who is this old man in this dirty, beat-up truck that was telling me this stuff? And he says, and when we stopped, when he let me out, he said, everything I've told you up to now was to entertain you and get your attention. Now I'm going to tell you something important. After you're 50 years old, you're going to be on the other side of this country. And one morning, you're going to be on a stage with a man sitting at a table with a lot of papers. And you're going to have a camera. That technology does not exist, but it will then. And you're going to have a camera sitting behind him over his shoulder so that when he picks up the paper to talk about, you will be able to hit it with the camera so that people in the audience will be able to see what he's talking about. Now, when that happens, you tell the guy sitting there, that you're filming, you tell him, I said that I put him at that table. He's sitting at that table doing what I want him to do. That was not his idea to sit at that table. It's my idea. I put him there. And he says, so this morning I'm sitting there filming you, and it finally dawned on me because I was so interested in getting everything ready, I wasn't thinking. And he said, I looked in the audience, I looked at my wife, and she was staring at me. Today, the prophecy was fulfilled. It was like 17 years ago. And the old man just told me to tell you that he put you there. 
That's not your idea. He wanted you there. That frightened me so that I got up and left. And I remember walking out at night, and I walked out to the street, and I was shaking. I was frightened. And he came out and walked with me. And I said, I don't understand what's happening. And he said, all I'm telling you is what the man said. So somebody knew what you were going to do 17 years ago when they told me. And he said it wouldn't be until after I turned 50. That's just one of many experiences. I, 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 because I would had so many experiences before that, it was just one more devastating blow that tells me that nobody, it doesn't seem to me that anybody is in control of anything. The thing about that particular story that really strikes me is the fact that he knew a particular camera did not exist then. How did he know that that camera was a technology that didn't exist? That implies that all this technology we're being given, we're being given. Somebody is giving the human race technology, high, incredibly intelligent technological advances. Somebody is giving it to us.